All right, I've got something very special for you today that is extra mega tiny. This thing is so tiny, look at this. This is literally, this is one terabyte in a single BGA package. One microchip contains an NVMe controller and all of the uh, special sauce necessary to access one terabyte of flash memory in one physical package that's not insanely expensive. The secret, Kioxia. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. You may know Kioxia as Toshiba. Toshiba Memory Systems has become Kioxia. It's a portmanteau of uh, Japanese word Kyoka for memory and uh, the Greek word Oxia for value. So value memory. And you know, they, they already have 20% of the market for flash memory. I mean, they're making leaps and strides in flash memory, but that's not really what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is PCI Express is basically taking over the industry. Now, we've got a special interview coming up. We're gonna be talking to Liquid. They do composable infrastructure, and really some of the secret sauce in composable infrastructure is manipulating and managing PCI Express signaling. And really, this is kind of the future. It's the future of the data center. Um, a lot of the really awesome sauce that you get from something like Amazon AWS and like AWS CLI and being able to spin up S3 and a lot of the other stuff is that you don't really have to think about infrastructure. You can just say, hey computer, I need more web server or I need more storage or I need faster storage or I need a database or I need file services or whatever. That's what makes AWS cool. But that doesn't really necessarily translate one-to-one -one for infrastructure. But suppose you had a rack that had GPUs and compute and storage and depending on what you're, you know, as a as a you know a system administrator, an IT guru, whatever, supporting a group of users, you just create a definition that goes beyond a virtual machine. You can actually allocate real physical resources beyond cores and beyond RAM, storage, and how many IOPS, which you get a little bit with with VMware, but having that VM actually translate or map one to one to physical hardware. I'm not talking about just PCI Express pass through, although that's a big part of it. But what if you had an entire cluster of servers? that were interconnected with PCI Express. PCI Express is literally everywhere in the data center, but it's also everywhere in consumer electronics, at least it's getting there. So like modern cell phones, literally the easiest interconnect is PCI Express. So in addition to PCI Express being everywhere, which we're gonna talk about, I'm gonna show you how you can save like $800 off of the price of an XQD memory card. We can convert this super insanely tiny M.2 into an XQD memory card. But look at SATA, serial ATA. Serial ATA, ATA is like something that goes back to the 80s when we had spinning hard drives. And serial ATA still pretends to be hard drives. NVMe was an approach to try to make it where you had sort of less overhead of flash solid state memory pretending to be hard drives. And now we're entering sort of a second generation where you've got in more NVMe functionality like namespaces, where it makes it a little bit more clear as we enter like four and five level cells. Uh, you can have a namespace that say single level cells and another namespace that say quad level cells in terms of flash memory and endurance because the single level cells are going to be way faster and have insanely more endurance, but quad level cells are going to be your uh, meat and potatoes in terms of your storage volume. And then this, the single BGA that has a PCI Express interface. But it's not just that, it's also cameras. So I wanted to show you something really cool. This is uh, a Lumix S1. It has an XQD card slot. XQD. That's a fancy way of saying PCI Express. This is literally a uh, card form factor. It's not quite, you know, compact flash because compact flash, believe it or not, is actually a form of that ATA interface. And yes, the command protocols and everything else still sort of pretend to be spinning rust, even though unless you've got a, you know, one gigabyte IBM micro drive, it's not actually spinning rust, but they did actually used to have spinning rust the size of a compact flash card, which is sort of nuts. Uh, SD cards, of course, which are, you know, made for multimedia storage, but the SD standard is basically obsolete at this point. It's, I mean, you've got like SD and XD, XC2, and you know, with the stuff these cameras are doing with the compressed protocol, you don't really need anything that fast. And, and XQD is starting to go away because it's crazy expensive. At the time that I'm making this video, an XQD memory card that's, you know, 128 gig 
is like over $200, like three, $400. One that's almost a terabyte is near $1,000, like six, $700. Sony is notoriously terrible for this because they're just sad. It's a very, it's like, I like Sony cameras. The picture quality out of a Sony camera is, is pretty good. I've been a Sony fan since the Sony Z505 laptop. That was an incredible laptop. And then Sony kind of did a bait and switch and then uh, subsequent laptops that were kind of a similar model weren't great. Sony, you know, a7 III, a7S, those are good cameras. But again, the thing that makes them unattractive is the Sony component. And so Sony, you know, with the XQD memory standard, they're just, it's, it's laughably insane. All right, I believe you, PCI Express is everywhere. Show me how I can save $800 on an XQD memory card. All right, so it's not enough that you've got an M.2. You have to have an M.2 that is very power frugal. Anybody that's ever used XQD in production, at least as of you know Q4 2020, they get hot. They get insanely hot. In fact, a lot of cameras, especially these, these newer monster cameras, take into account the heat production of the XQD in terms of uh, run limitations, in terms of recording from the sensor. So the sensor heating up and the processor and the camera heating up, plus the memory card heating up, means that you may be time limited for recording on certain cameras because of the heat production. Uh, Canon, well, the Canon thing is a whole other story because Canon might actually just be doing that for being terrible. Uh, what is it, uh, the camera connection calls it the Canon cripple hammer? Yeah, I, but heat production in a camera is a real serious thing to worry about. The S1 upgrade, S1H, includes a vent. That's what I'm recording on right now. And uh, a fan. So it actually moves air through the camera to try to cool it down when you're running, you know, full tilt 4K insanity. And that's a, you know, it's a, it's a newer-ish, older-ish camera at this point. There's the S5 and all that, but my trusty S1, which I love the picture quality out of this, the full-frame sensor. And yeah, it's got an SD card slot as well, but man, those XQD cards are insanely expensive. All right, this, this is the secret. This is the Zete, uh, you know, CFast to SSD. It's not really CFast, it's XQD to M.2. Because it's just PCI Express. It's literally just a format conversion. All right, so check this out. This is your XQD card. This is a PCI Express ribbon cable, just like you'd have on a PCI Express riser card. And then inside here, inside our metal container, is room enough for up to a 110 M.2. The problem is the reviews on this thing are a little mixed because people are trying to put Samsung SSDs and other really high performance SSDs, which some cameras can deliver the power in order to be able to do that, but some cameras can't. And one SSD that is insanely fast, over two gigabytes per second read and over a gigabyte per second write, are these one terabyte monsters from Keoxia. And yeah, you can just drop it in. These are, <laughs> technically these are OEM only components, but I reached out to them and I was like, hey, I've got a crazy idea for a project. Will you send me some of these? And so they sent me some of these for this and another project that I've got coming up. So this is really exciting, but check this out. All right, so right in the box is everything you need. You've got little mounting pegs and a tiny Phillips screwdriver. It even has an accessory thing. So like if you've got a cage for your camera, you can mount this thing to the cage so it doesn't move around because if this moves around, it's gonna yank on the card and then you're gonna have a bad connection to your memory camera. You don't want that. All right, just look at, look at, look at how ridiculous this is. This M.2 is literally smaller than an XQD card. Like, it's smaller and thinner. I mean, you can, re <laughs> you can really see this package that packs the in the NVMe controller. I mean, it's thick. It's a thick package for a BGA. But look at that. It's actually thinner than the XQD card. Like, we could probably mod this. There's somebody, I, I bet I could get somebody to mod this uh, from like AliExpress. Because look, this BGA would definitely fit inside this package if we didn't have the rest of the stuff that we didn't need. Like, why don't we have this? This is just, this is just, Look, Sony, you don't need to charge us $700 for a one terabyte, you know, XQD card. You just need to call Kyoksha and they will get you fixed up. This is exactly what you need. Come on, Sony, get it together. Oh, but what about the ride endurance? Oh yeah, it's gonna be rewritten over 500 times, which is better endurance than the Sony memory cards. Oh uh, heck, you could over provision this one terabyte to like 650, 750 gigabytes and probably get another two, 300 complete drive rights out of it if you did that. But look at this. I'm just some random bozo on YouTube. I shouldn't be able to do Sony's product design and product development, but this is clearly a better product, even though it's bulkier, but come on, where's these products? Alternately, 
This could mean that the bottom is about to fall out of the XQD memory card price because why does it cost $700 for a terabyte of flash in this day and age? So let's test it. <laughs> That's literally it. That's literally all you gotta do. And the aluminum case makes a handy heat sink. So there's our XQD card slot. Hey, look at that, it's reading from card one. And look at that, there's no memory card. There's no memory card in there. And yet, look at that. It's recording, it's recording, it's recording. We're doing 6K anamorphic with the hack. Well, 5,800 anyway. Woo! Yeah, 150 FPS, all right. Woo, there's Picard, there's the thing. I hit stop, now let's hit play. Bam. Okay, yeah, the adapter costs a little bit of money, but you could just get one adapter and switch out your M.2s. But this clearly shows that XQD memory card prices right now, kind of a scam, kind of a scam. Sony could do better. And because that pricing is exploitive, Hopefully you understand why everything going to PCI Express, a standardized interface at the top of the stack in the enterprise and the bottom of the stack in consumer electronics and even cell phones is good for pricing. It means that you don't have to pay a premium for what is ultimately, you know, bog standard flash memory or bog standard anything else. Standardization is actually very good. And I'm glad that PCI Express, you know, ultimately won out in the end because it's fast and it's not completely terrible. And uh, the designs are well supported in terms of speeds even well beyond PCI Express 4.0. I mean, to be sure these are PCI Express 3 devices that we're working with right now, but as lithography improves, silicon lithography and mixed packaging technology comes about so they can package their standard issue and flash memory with seven nanometer, five nanometer, three nanometer controllers, uh, whatever happens to come along because not necessarily all of the silicon in a package has to be on the same lithography process because they've bundled you know, standard NAND flash memory with a standard NVMe controller in one package. That's revolutionary, but that's also why it's super tiny. And that's also why you could upgrade your GPD Win handheld computers to one terabyte now. And also the power usage is extremely good. Like the power usage here is shockingly low. Yes, you can get faster NVMe, higher performance NVMe, but you would be hard pressed to find an NVMe that is more power efficient because it's so tiny and it's all in one package and power efficient and fast enough is exactly what you need for cameras and cell phones and also consumer laptops. Cause again, remember, you know, they're already in 20, 25% of consumer laptops. So I'm excited about this. I'm excited about having PCI Express in literally everything. I'm excited about the possibilities of having really, really kick butt memory cards for really awesome cameras and everything else that don't cost an arm and a leg because you know, where we're at now is a hundred dollars a terabyte plus or minus a little, a little more than that in a premium package. Like I could see paying a little over that for something like this, especially if it's overrated in terms of like it's true capacity is a terabyte, but it's us usable capacities like 750 gigabytes or whatever, just because of the whole endurance thing, the, the whole flash endurance thing. But you get what I'm saying, basically. It's not a thousand dollars per terabyte, which is insane. So exciting times. I went this level one. This has been a quick look at, depending on your point of view, why PCI Express is taking over the world, alternate title, why XQD memory cards are a scam. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1, I'm signing out, and I'll see you later. And thanks again, Kyokushi, for indulging me, because this has just been a little bit of mad science, and we're cooking up a little more.